Deku's next quirk will be none other than Shimura Nana's, and that power is... What's up boys and girls, I'm back. Kind of. But welcome to another My Hero Academia chapter review. And man does that sound so good to say. So Boku no Hero Academia chapter 257 in the manga. We'll discuss everything from Deku's power up through one for all, to what the students are doing, to a time skip. That's right, it's confirmed that there's only one more month until Shigaraki gets that power up. And a potential meeting between All Might and the villain Stain. Let's dive into this one. The chapter opens with All Might discussing information from the notebook that he gave to Deku. He says he couldn't find any information on the second and third users of One For All. Remember, these are the silhouetted figures who remain faceless and are eerily similar to both Bakugo and Kirishima. Now, the true identity and names of the second and third users of One For All is a topic for another video. And believe me, there are some crazy theories out there and I guess now I'll have to contribute my own. But we do learn one of the Vestige's identities here. Bakugo reads from the notebook, fifth successor, hero name, Lariat, real name, Daigoro Banjo, quirk, Black Whip. So we do learn the real identity of the vestige that actually appeared to Deku during the joint training battle arc and said, dude, you need to step it up. Makes sense, because a uh, Lariat is a rope. I learned that today. Bakugo chimes in and says, Dang, none of these vestiges had really impressive quirks, and Deku being Deku of course thinks they're all amazing quirks, but then All Might responds to Bakugo, and what he says is kinda scary. All Might says, The vestiges struggle through hell to hone the power of One For All, since All For One was so persistent in going after One For All and got rid of anyone he deemed too powerful. In the end, they all gave their lives to pass on the quirk, and each and every one of them died young. This kind of changes how I view All For One. Now, in my mind, he's the perfect villain. I don't mean in terms of power, because All Might beat him twice and he's now in jail, but he really never made any mistakes except for initially giving his brother a quirk. I originally thought that All For One was really cocky in giving his brother a quirk. He was kind of taunting him, saying, huh, beat me with that pathetic stockpiling quirk. And that's not really the case. Even if he was kind of cocky in the beginning, he quickly realized that this quirk is going to get really powerful throughout the generations. And once he knew this, he really made a concerted effort to stop people. Once they became too powerful, he went after them and eliminated them. I assume he's the one that killed all the previous users of One For All since he killed Shimura and Nana, and he tried to kill All Might, he just didn't get the job done. But I gotta give it to him. I mean, even though he's the bad guy, kudos to him for trying to rectify, really, his only mistake. So, good job, I guess. Enough about All For One though, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Bakugo asks All Might, what's this nerd gonna learn next? And All Might tells Deku, the next power you will learn is my masters, Shimura Nana's quirk, floating. Yes, finally! <laughs> this is so cool. Thank you, Horikoshi. Thank you. We finally get another Vestiges quirk, and uh, none other than Bay Shimura Nana's. Let's go! For starters, I guess it really makes sense that with her quirk, why she was training with Gran Torino. Also, the ability to levitate is actually pretty helpful for Deku, because against Shigaraki and his decay, you do not want to be situated on the ground, especially with the new power-up he's getting, which we'll touch upon in a, in a bit. What do you guys think though? Do you like Shimura Nana's quirk? Do you think it's a good addition for Deku? Comment your thoughts below. Personally, I love it. I like that it's not too OP. But at the same time, it's very helpful. Being able to move your body without moving your body off the ground, I think it's going to serve Deku pretty well. Also, once he trains it, it's possible that maybe he could actually float other people. Because we actually see when Shimura Nana pushes All Might away when she's about to be killed by All for One, I think she actually floats him away. Since Deku will now gain the ability to float and levitate, it's also a nice opportunity to train with Uraraka and of course have some more hidden romance between these two characters. We've said before that Sarah could potentially help Deku master Black Whip, so it's possible that all the quirks from the Vestiges will actually be like Deku's classmates' quirks so that Deku can use the power of friendship to master all these skills and defeat Shigaraki. It's possible that in the future maybe he learns a water quirk and Tsuyu can help him out, or a fire quirk and Shoto can actually tutor Deku. 
I mean, if Prince Zuko can become Aang's firebending teacher, I'm sure Shoto can spare a few moments of time to help Deku with any flame-related quirk. We get this cutscene where it goes back to the students of Class 1A eating hot pot. Thanks for the invite, guys. But it's really nice to see everyone relaxing and talking about being second years and really just enjoying their downtime. But <laughs> if you know anything about Horikoshi, it's that as soon as these students think they're off or can relax for a bit, take a breath, that's when the villains are going to come in. <laughs> we have this scene where Deku's just thinking, oh, I'm so hashtag blessed fam, everything that's happened with Kachan and All Might, I just have an amazing life. Alright, Deku Scrub, just enjoy it while you can, because we all know that Shigaraki's going to emerge out of his cocoon and become the darkest, most villainous butterfly that you've ever seen. Guys, once he gets this power up, just the future of My Hero Academia. Get ready! Speaking of your boy Shigaraki, we have a confirmed time skip in My Hero Academia. It says it's now late March, so Shigaraki's what, about a month out from completing his surgery or procedure and gaining his power? The chapter even confirms that the cherry blossoms are just beginning to bloom. So, bro, you know, you know that in an anime, when those cherry blossoms come out, something's about to go down. Who would have thought that the number one verified way to make an arc look cooler in an anime was to just throw some pink petals in the mix? Oh, Japan. I'm not just being a hype man for Shigaraki either. I mean, I'll take the position if it's available. But at the end of this chapter, we see Dr. Ujiko walking down a hospital corridor and a nurse says, Oh, Dr. Ujiko, how unusual. Good morning. And Dr. Ujiko, this little cretin says, Ho ho ho, morning. Dr. Ujiko is excited about something, and I predict in the next chapter or so, we'll see exactly what he's on about. We will see Shigaraki's final procedure or test, and we'll see him gain the new power. The power to take one for all. Dr. Ujiko, bro, what a, what a mad, mad, mad scientist lad. Also, all this Shigaraki business comes with this really creepy and eerie ending at the chapter where it says, on this day, the heroes disappeared from the city. What? I don't really know what to make of this. We do know that the villains have immense numbers, so maybe on that day, they went to war and all of the heroes were slain in the city. Also, we do know that Best Genius has been kidnapped by the League of Villains or the Paranormal Liberation Front, so it's possible that all the heroes refers to the most powerful ones, and maybe they're all captured by the League of Villains, and Dr. Ujiko is about to work overtime transferring their quirks to Shigaraki, or making them into high-end Nomu. Even though it's ominous and very vague, it's definitely a comment-worthy thing. So, what do you guys think, on this day, all the heroes disappeared from the city, actually means. Leave your thoughts down below, and I look forward to reading these and responding to them, and I hope there's a lot of comments. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of comments. Wow. The last thing I want to talk about is this private conversation between All Might and Aizawa. All Might tells him that he feels really frustrated. He wishes he could do more for the students, but he really can't. And Aizawa tells him, listen, just you being here, just you being alive, is enough inspiration for them. Oh my gosh, really Aizawa, are you kidding me? Just you being alive? Way to jinx it. What did I just say? Just when you think you're fine, that's when the villains will attack. What do you think Shigaraki's gonna do after he gains this power? The number one thing on his mind is coming after the symbol of peace. If this isn't All Might will soon meet a terrible end foreshadowing, I don't know what else is. Eraserhead does have an important message for All Might though, and he informs All Might that the police chief Tsukauchi wants to delay their meeting with the villain Stain. What could this mean? We know recently because of the whole Kurogiri and Shirakumo thing that UA staff have been visiting Tartarus to gain information from captured villains, but what could visiting a person like Stain actually accomplish? Now I'm not sure what Stain does or doesn't know about the League of Villains, especially given the fact that they're the Paranormal Liberation Front now, but one thing is for sure, unlike a Shirakumo Kurogiri Nomu that's being remotely controlled, or some villain that's still loyal to their clan, Stain would cooperate with the heroes. One, Stain has never been a fan of Shigaraki's or the League of Villains, and I'm sure that his time in Tartarus has not made him a sympathizer so he'd probably take any chance he could to expose them and give the heroes what they need to go after the League of Villains. Now, if you're thinking, well, Stain doesn't really like heroes, 
Here's number two. Who is the one hero that Stain actually respected and said, hey, if anyone's being a true hero, it's this guy. If anyone is going to kill me or bring me to justice, it's this guy. Well, that was All Might, so perhaps Toshinori going to meet with him will actually get Stain to confess a lot and he'll become a valuable asset to the heroes. Regardless of what comes out of this, the next few chapters of My Hero Academia should be pretty lit. We'll get to see Shigaraki's new power, these students finally graduating from their first year at UA and becoming second years, and this meeting with Stain. For all you guys that thought, hey, maybe Stain could actually turn good or help the heroes, I bet you guys are so hyped right now. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about this chapter. What do you think about Shimura Nana's floating quirk? What's going to happen in this meeting between Toshinori and the villain Stain? And what about this ominous ending? On this day, all the heroes disappeared from the city. Comment below. Also, thank you guys for all the support, especially when I've been away from YouTube. It's really encouraging to see. And I'm not really back 100% yet, but it's good to be making content for you guys. So, like, comment. And if you like My Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, enroll at UA today by subscribing. And share this video with a friend. Let the world know that Truth Hero is back on hero duty. And until next time, plus ultra. Okay, one more thing to add about Deku gaining Shimura Nana's floating quirk, which I'm still too hyped about. We kind of saw this in the last episode of My Hero Academia, where Deku uses Eri's power and he's kind of flying through the sky and using one for all at 100%. That's how he's able to change direction in midair, but obviously Ares healing him and he's not breaking his whole body. But with the floating quirk you can kind of float and move a little bit, but these quirks like Black Whip and Shimura Nana's, they kind of fuse with One For All since they're kind of contained within it. I mean they are contained within it. So Deku, confirmed, now has the ability to change direction in midair like it's a Pokemon scene. So just thought I'd share that and I'm hyped for Shimura Nana. Let's go. Freedom!